Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. By popular demand, here's a snow game. Snow, uh, maybe the strongest player in the world right now, maybe? Could be, definitely in the online stuff. Uh, is the strongest player statistically in the world alongside Light. Uh, and he's in the top right there. In the top left, this is 815. Uh, 815, you all remember this guy is the cheesiest of the pros. Uh, you know, I call Zealot the most aggressive, but this guy, like, literally will just do Ling All-Ins and, and uh, <laughs> you know, four pools and stuff like that. We've seen it countless times in ASL. Uh, he definitely picks up victories with that. He knows what he's doing. He can play a macro game as well, but generally he's very, very cheesy. Also one of the older pros that is still active and able to do things like get into ASL. So we're on Citadel. We'll see how he wants to play and if Snow can go ahead and block it. You would definitely favor Snow here. He's a different class, but uh, for such an aggressive Zerg, there's always a chance, right? <clears throat> you can always see a Zerg like that, maybe finding a way in with the Lings, maybe finding a pre-cannon timing or pre-storm timing or catching the Corsairs and killing with Mutas, right? There's, there's a lot of different things that can go wrong in a PVZ. So we'll see how this one ends up going. Uh, the drone being pulled down towards that natural. And yeah, of course, it is just going to be a hatchery first. No big surprise. Forge on the way. We'll see if he tries a cannon rush. There is a decent position back here for it. Uh, and in fact, he checks for that. <laughs> he sends a drone to mine from the bottom. Uh, so that that kind of tells you that, he, oh, he doesn't even mind. He just he put on like a move command to get there. What was that? Uh, and then he does start to come out. Snow will get over here and scout. He'll see that this is hatch first. So it looks like he might cannon rush. Okay. This. Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe he tried to click it in here. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, Snow is definitely looking like he wants a cannon rush here. Yep. Puts that down. And more drones coming. Now, normally what you'll do is just go here and then pop drones back. You'll just stack them here and then start to pop them behind. We'll see if that's going to be uh, what he ends up going for. You're probably going to have to pop two to have any chance. I don't know if he's going to pop any, though. This is like a very tight area. I can see the drone just dancing forever and the cannon finishing. Second uh, probe. If you can get the second probe, uh, then he can't get more cannons on the outside. And that's, that's kind of huge. If you can't get more cannons on the outside, then it becomes very holdable. Okay, throws down another cannon. Wow, excellent location. Excellent location here. Cancels out that pylon. Throws down a third cannon. Oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's funny because I'm sitting here talking about how 815 is the cheeser. And, you know, he has all these aggressive, crazy builds that he wants to do. And then we have this. Snow making multiple cannons over here. Now, Lings are out. He's clearing some of the lings. Sunken finishes. Dude. He just he just holds straight up. Now, he holds, but what does the rest of the map look like? Cannon finishing at the natural. Some lings running past. He had to make two sunkens and, and a bunch of lings. So the drone count is 10 against 17 probes. Obviously, that doesn't look super hot. Uh, we have a drone ready for the third hatch. Yeah, I would definitely uh, say that it's not as um, favored for Zerg as I thought it might be when I saw that get held. First off, I thought for a moment that he might actually end up holding it. You can see he's killing his own sunken, by the way, because it's in the way of mining. So just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Not really worried about Zealot pressure coming across the map later on. Uh, fully walled here against any links coming up. You can notice he's attacking. This is the early man's hold position for a probe. Right? If you just have it sit there, there's no hold position command unless you can select it with another unit. Lazelot, for instance, would be the first unit Protoss gets. So without a Zealot there, this is the only way you can make sure that the probe will not move even if attacked. Very common move. All right, Zealot is on the way. And we have the recovery coming up for our Zerg player. You know, when you hold a cannon rush, generally the Zerg player will end up winning from there. Don't know if that's going to be the case. Because he was pretty low in drones. He, had, he did have to spend a lot to hold that, but he did hold it. Hygelus Den. Ooh, okay. Some very aggressive stuff going to be coming out of 815 here. Still hatching a bunch of drones. 
He's got to keep snow in his base with these lings. You can't let him scout what you're doing. Cybernetic score on the way. And I kind of wonder, right? Like, does he just go balls the wall all in here? I think he does. Like, you start your speed upgrade, make a few more drones, then just pure Hydra rally it over. Because I think he's going to get there before you can really push out. Like, as soon as the third Zealot comes out, I think you start to push. See, he comes here. What he's trying to do, if the Lings try to surround the Zealots here, the ones that go in the back get hit by the cannons. That's why they were dancing exactly on this line. If the Zealots go beyond there, you can surround them and the cannons won't hit. But if the Zealots keep walking back from here, you can't surround. They can only get good hits. But with three, you can actually beat this. That's why I was saying with three, he'll definitely move out. So good move out there from Snow. Some very excellent micro pushes those lings back. This is an important moment. What intel are these Zealots going to pick up? Stargate is almost done. He's going to be able to make a Corsair out of that pretty quickly. Of course, the speed upgrade almost done for these Hydras. The Ling's just making a beeline home. Maybe going to try to slow them down again on this ramp. Probe coming with the Zealots. Looks like he rotates the Zealots back towards home. In comes the Probe. He sees the Hydra. He sees the Hydra. Very important moment there for Snow. Okay, Snow has to add cannons now. I say I, he needs to add at least a couple more. Like three is not going to do it. Okay, there's one more. Definitely needs at least one more. I actually think you might want one more on top of that, but I, five might be able to do it. Well, it matters, of course, how many continue to come out as well. You want to you wanna track that with the Corsair. The Citadel is on the way. Range upgrade coming in. Still sees Hydras hatching. Look, as he sees more Hydras hatching, this is where you add more cannons. If it turns to drones, absolutely add gateways. If it if it stays on hydras, you're going to need those cannons for sure. Right, range is almost done. He's got five zealots sitting there. Corsair still flying around. There's still hydras being made. Nothing but. All right, picks off the first cannon. Put some damage down on those zealots as well. Loses a few hydras. Going to work on the wall. You know, he has the range upgrade, so definitely can pick everything off. Ooh, looks like he caught one of the overlords uh, that was near here. Now, if you get all the overlords there nearby, you can go up to Dark Templar and hold it with that. But it doesn't look like that's going to be a real option. By the way, he did restart a new fifth cannon after losing this one before losing the forge. And there is another forge, so he will be able to get back into that. Zealot Legs is on the way. Very, very important. Zealot Legs are something that will definitely help him uh, to continue to hold this and maybe even counter push. Corsair's flying back in. Just kind of arranging his Hydras to be able to knock down this gateway. Templar Archives coming up. He does have that secondary gas with a thousand gas in the bank. Right now, this is starting to look snow favored. Now, this is not unplayable for 815. He's got these three hatches. Look, he's on six hatch already. He is getting his layer. His drone count, 33 against 48. It's not like perfect, but he can actually drone up a little bit more, I think, as well. He's making more hydras at the moment. So I think he's anticipating a speed zealot run out. And that's exactly what Snow's going to do. It's like the next step in what you're supposed to be doing here. So he gets up and actually surrounds a few of these hydras. Good micro there from Snow. Utilize that move command pretty heavily to try to surround Hydras. Get that surface area with the Zealots that are so tough. More units coming up here for 815, though. A lot of those Hydras are hurt. He's going to go ahead, pull away with these Zealots. Probably just make all these units go on a wild goose chase and then send other units out to counter. Flying those Corsairs in. Maybe going to look for a Spire. By the way, double forge for Snow. Going for 1-1 one, one upgrades now. More Hydras rallying across the map. He's brought this group back up. Don't forget these six outs. They did run away. Pretty impossible to catch those right now. Snow has started to spend a good amount of gas. He's actually making a bunch of High Templars now, which means no units at home, and the Hydras dive onto the cannons. A perfect situation for him. The probes come out to fight. A DT comes out here to help hold it as well. 
But that is a fair amount of probes that ended up dying. So that was a pretty good move, I think, from 815. Brings up more Hydras as well. So he's going to be able to micro against these Zealots as they come up. They have to turn around. There's no cannons right now. There's no Overlord. So the DT is going to kind of save the day at the moment. But it looks like, oh my god, he actually turned the uh, High Templars into Archons, realizing what trouble he was in. The Archon's generally not the greatest unit against High Templars. You definitely, I mean, against Hydras, generally you want the High Templars. Uh, but they are going to help out here. Kind of a wild game. I love that counterattack from uh, from 815. Like, he he really read the situation said, you know what? He's making High Templars. Let's get in there. If there were, uh, like, five Zealots that popped out, or, like, even a couple DTs a little bit quicker, maybe he holds on and the cannons are enough to push everything back. But with High Templars there, there's no units, so you can just bust the cannons super, super fast. More and more Hydras being made here for 815. I think uh, Overlord Speed is the only real upgrade he's going to be getting from here. His plus one going to be finishing up. DT out in front. High Templars adding in. So going up to eight gates now. Robotics here as well. Has those three cannons on defense in case he needs them. DT throwing out a lot of extra damage. You need that Overlord Speed to finish ASAP. Snow getting ready for a third base. Interesting third base to be taking. I feel like this is by far the more common one because it has a gas, but he decides instead he wants to take this one that's out in the front. See if that pays off or not. More High Templars coming down to join his army. Looks like he has a fair amount of storms. He has two storms, a third, a fourth, and a fifth. Uh, very close. Five storms, obviously more than enough to decimate that army. Snow right now, even getting Kadarin Amulet, getting into Dragoon range as well. Yeah, 815 uh, has his Spire finishing, and he does have plus two on the way for Hydras. So those are like the two things, right? Plus two, obviously you're making a ton of Hydras. With the Spire finishing, I think what we might see is him try to snipe. Just like make a, an amount of uh, Mutalisks and try to snipe off some High Templars. But he actually attacks in a couple very good storms. This group actually having a great engagement on this side. But down here, the High Templars just ravaging that Hydralisk swarm. Another storm pushes back the northern group. And now 815 has to run back with both. Only Hydralis being made. No chance for that Mutalisk switch right now. I think with this third base being up, it really puts a lot of pressure onto 815. He's got to finish this game or he's going to lose. Like, he is just pure Hydra man right now. There's really nothing else for him to go into. You know, there was that one chance of maybe going into Mutalisks, but with all these Archons there, with the Dragoons that have the range upgrade, uh, you know, already has an armor upgrade to keep everything alive against the Mutas a little bit longer. I understand why he didn't make the, the Mutalisks. But yeah, this is... This attack, I think, has to basically kill the army. I think you have to kill the army and kill this base. <laughs> it's it's a tough one. A15 going to attack in. Good storm goes down. Going to throw down another storm there to the left. Really excellent storms here from Snow. Oh my god, really, really good damage. Couple more Stormers come up. Makes an Archon out of the two that he utilized there. The Hydralis group, not as large. He is making a bunch more. Going to continue to try to push through. You know, if your opponent misses any High Templars, if their storms uh, stop, you know, Hydras kind of counter all the rest of the units in the right numbers. Of course, they're almost getting that Overlord there. Snow definitely in a winning position. But 815 feeling like he has another chance. All right, he actually drew a bunch of the army out. Oh my god, look at this. With just five Hydras, he draws a ton of the army out of position. Let's see if he can make anything happen. We do have a couple Psy Storms. That Psy Storm, absolutely brutal. Another perfect Psy Storm goes down. Very, very tough stuff. I think Snow has just about held this. The two flanking Hydras come in once again. He is getting a favorable trade here. 
like cutting through those zealots going to be able to pop down these dragoons very quickly the archon as well but as the rest of the army comes down the hydras do have to turn around another cannon being made also i don't think there's any real chance left here for 815 fourth base being taken 815 star has started his own fourth but it is a little bit late to the party you can't be going four base versus four it's like you know if you're playing three base versus three you're kind of all in a zerg and he hasn't been able to make that work here sees those probes transferring up gonna just keep making you know another group of hydras trying to push in trying to bust once again the upgrade's just fantastic over here. Even going for plus one plasma shields, going for plus two armor, already has plus two attack. Fantastic play here from Snow as per the usual. All right, pushing up gonna hit into this nexus Ooh, good size storm another excellent size storm pushing part of this back some good micro here by 815 he's starting to whittle down a few of these units but the cannons getting some extra hits the dragoons coming in dealing that finishing damage lurker upgrade on the way for 815 and he has saturated this base so like he's still trying to make something of it but certainly in a bad spot right now the dragoons on the high ground his hydras on both sides going to be retreating you know, 815. Yeah, he is going to end up giving it up against the four bases of snow. Excellently played by our Protoss Pro. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.